A super common question I get asked as a professional bike mechanic is why are my gears slipping, why are my gears crunching, why are my gears jumping? I bet at some point your gears have felt horrible and unsafe to ride. Ultimately you want to sort this problem out before you get hurt. I've seen a lot of BS stuff on YouTube and the internet talking about how to stop your gears slipping and jumping. I just want to shed some light on the subject and that's what this is all about. You've just got to become the bike. G'day viewers, my name is Ashley Malcolm and this is the third in a series of rear derailleur gear problems. Let's take a look at why your gears might be slipping or jumping on your bike and the main common causes of that and how we can remedy it. You're going to want to stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how I make my cogs last forever, well much longer anyway, and it's going to save you loads of money. So buckle your toe straps because we're going to jump straight into it right now. Okay, an easy way to tell if your chain is wearing out is to uh, get yourself a chain checker. This is sort of one I use in the workshop. Um, I don't really like the uh, dial ones, etc. I just don't think they, um, they work as well. This just gives this one here, or this type of one, just gives you a, def a definitive answer to whether the chain's worn or not, and also how worn it is. Another tool that we have in the workshop for checking whether cassettes are worn out is a hyperglide checker. So this little tool here. Now I'm going to show you how to use both these tools to work out whether your chain and your cassette are worn out, but then I'm also going to show you how to do it without the tools. Now, anyone who rides a bike, whether you're a mechanic or not, or do your own work or not, should have one of these tools. They're not very expensive, and they will save you a fortune in the long run. When we get to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what benefit there is in having one of these and uh, checking your chain regularly. Now, basically what this tool does is it measures the distance between the rollers on a chain. And as a chain wears out, the, the rollers wear, and they get loose on their pins, and they basically, the gap between them gets bigger. Now this tool has two measurements on it. One of them tells you that your chain's okay or is getting worn out and it's probably okay to carry on with it. The other one tells you that your chain is completely shot and it's time to change it before the cogs start wearing out as well. And if they already have, you may get some sort of slippage where the cranks fall from out underneath you while you're putting power down. And that's not something that you want to happen because that could cause you a serious accident. Okay, let me show you how this bad boy works. We're gonna put it on a recently decent chain and then we're gonna put it on a chain that's completely shot and you'll see exactly what the difference is and how the tool works. So what you do is you shift your bike into the two biggest cogs, or at least one of the larger sprockets on the rear and the large sprocket on the front. And the reason for doing this is it will pull the chain pretty much as tight as it's gonna be. And then you can put the tool in and see whether there's too much distance between the rollers and whether it needs replacing or not. Now, if you try and do this in the small chain ring and one of the small cogs, because the chain's not really under too much tension, often you can get a false reading. So it'll tell you it's okay, but actually it's not. And then what you want to do is get the tool and then drop it into the chain. And if it's okay on the longest side, you then want to turn it around and put it onto the other side. As you can see on my bike here, when we put it in with the one millimeter side, it doesn't drop in at all. So let's just turn it over and put it on the, put the 0.75 of a millimeter one in. And again, you can see it doesn't go in at all. So that shows that the chain isn't worn out at all. Okay, so the next thing we wanna have a look at is the chain rings and the cogs on the cassette or the freewheel and just see if they've got any wear on it. Now they usually wear out together. So the chances are, if your chain's worn out, especially if it's really worn out, then your cogs are gonna be worn out as well on the rear and you may well have worn out chain rings as well. So let's have a quick look at mine and we'll see how they're looking. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to check your cogs with a, a cog checker. But to be honest with you, we very rarely, rarely use it. It's only if it's maybe touch and go whether you think it's worn out. And the best way to really tell is to take the bike for a ride because that's all this simulates. It simulates what happens when you put the power through the chain and whether that's gonna be held by the cogs or not or whether it's gonna slip. And if you're gonna do that, what you really need to do is check more than one cog. I mean, when I go out and test ride a bike, I'll check all the cogs just to see if it's slipping. The chances are that the smaller cogs will wear out much quicker than the larger cogs because there's less teeth on them. So they do just wear out quicker. So you might find that it's okay in like three, four or five gears, but it might just start slipping in just one of them. But that's when it's time to change it. Or in fact, it should have already been changed. So to use the cog checking tool, what you need to do is just wrap the chain around a little bit and um, put the end of it down into one of the teeth and just push hard on it. And that basically just, um, it's, it's just like riding the bike out on the road. And if it doesn't slip, then it's probably all right. Now, if you just have a look at the teeth on the cassette, you'll see that there's some little uh, ramps on the side of them. And that's basically to help the chain shift up when you're going towards the bigger cogs. And if you actually have a good look, 
you can see that on each cog they're in line with each other and that's just because if you're trying to shift up more than one cog at a time this just aids the shifting even further now if we have a look at the teeth on the big chain wheel here what you'll notice is that they've got fairly round tops of them and the actual u-shape in between each tooth is pretty similar in wear so this means it's not really worn out if it was worn out what you would see is on the leading edge where the chain is actually pulling as you pedal down that would actually be curved out more and it'll be more of a point on the teeth the other thing you might notice as well is that some of the teeth are actually flat you know so that they're actually smaller than the other teeth and the reason for that is so that you know they come like that from the manufacturer and that's there just to aid the shifting when you're going up from one cog to another okay now we're looking at the little chain ring here and you can see that the teeth are very uniform um, they're, they're squared off at the top but that's how they're meant to be and there's no actual arcing out on the leading edge of the teeth so this chain ring is fine as well now another good way to tell whether the chain ring is worn out and also this helps you tell if the chain's worn out is you just get it by the front sort of at about i don't know two o'clock or something like that and um, you just pull the chain and if you just go straight back in then it's fine you know something you'll always see a little bit of light when you pull it out but if it goes back in then it's probably fine now if we get the chain checker and we put it on this chain on this bike that's looking like it's seen better days when we put it in with the one mil side down, it nearly goes all the way in. And if we push it quite hard, it still won't go all the way in. But if we turn it over to the 0.75 millimeter side, uh, so it's basically measuring a slightly smaller gap, it just drops straight in. And you can actually see that it, if I move it sort of backwards and forwards, it actually moves between the rollers. So this chain has pretty much had it. So we put the sprocket checking tool on there and we push it quite hard and um, the, nothing happens. So it, you know that's basically saying that it's okay. But as this is there to simulate like the power of your legs going through the, the cranks and the chain and the cogs, I might just take this out for a ride and see if we get a different result. Okay, so I just took that bike out for a little bit of a burn. The um, cassette checking tool didn't say that anything was worn out when, we, when I tried it out on the, uh, on the cassette on that bike. But you can see when I put the power down, and I'm not even out of the seat because I don't want to go over the handlebars when it slips, but it's slipping in a few gears down near the bottom of the cassette. Okay, so if we have a look now at the, the chain rings on this bike, you'll see that on the middle chain ring, that some of the teeth are actually quite pointy and the others kind of look okay. Now, a lot of people think that you just look at some of the teeth and that's fine, but that's not really how it works. Because of the pedal stroke going down on different sides and different parts of the pedal stroke, so for example, you don't really put any power through at the top of the pedal stroke, some of the teeth on the cogs will wear faster than the others. And as you can see, these are quite concave out on the front there where the chain's going into it. And also they're quite pointy. So if this bike's not slipping, it's gonna start slipping soon. If you now look at the big chain wheel, as we just pedal it around, you'll see that as the chain's coming up, there's actually daylight between the chain and the big chain wheel. Now that's mainly because of the chain's worn out compared to the chain wheel, but the chain wheel is getting quite worn out. And it probably isn't gonna to be too much longer of riding with this chain on it before the chain rings toast as well. So if you feel like you've got some benefit from this, hit the like button down the bottom and share it with anyone you think would benefit from it. Okay guys, thanks for making it this far through the video. It's time for you to get some tips on how to make your drive chain, so the chain and the cogs and the chain rings last longer on your bike. And the first one is really don't use the big, big combinations together as a regular habit. You know, it's all right to shift into the, the big cogs at the back when you're in the big chain ring, if you're just getting over the top of a climb and it's not gonna be for that long. But if you're just riding around in those gears, it's putting the derailleur and the chain under a lot of tension, and that's basically wearing your cogs out much, much faster. So use the gears like you would use them in a car. You know, don't ride away from the lights in the big chain ring. Put in a small chain when you come up to the lights. Change the gears as you go across the, across the uh, crossing. You know, you wouldn't drive your car around in fifth gear. So why are you riding your bike around in the big chain wheel and the big cogs at the rear? Another good tip is not to ride around in the same gears all the time. You know, use your gears, that's what they're there for. Otherwise, why have you got a 12 speed on the rear when you could just have two? Using the whole cassette and also both the chain rings at the front, as the chain's wearing out, you're getting a more even wear on those other items and therefore the chain's not wearing out as quickly. So use your noggin and use your gears. Right, the next tip I'm gonna give you for making your dry train last longer is don't get it dirty. And what I mean by that is don't over oil it because if you over oil your chain, it'll just pick up all the dirt off the road and or if you're off road and that will just turn into that black muck that you get on a chain. And that is just like grinding paste and it will literally wear it out at twice the rate as if it did had no oil on it whatsoever. So when people fit a new chain, 
there's one thing they do wrong that I see all too often. They basically don't get the chain through the jockey cage properly and they run it over the outside tab and that will make your gears jump. Heck, I've done it myself recently. And finally, one of the best tips I can give you is not to over clean your chain. Now, I don't put loads of oil on my chain. I definitely don't put degreases on my chain. You know, if you look up all the manufacturers' websites who make chains, it does specifically say, do not use solvents on our chains. And yet everyone does it. What I would do is get a can of GD85 and a rag, and I'll just either spray some on the chain, and then I'd uh, wipe it off with a rag, both vertically and horizontally, or I would just soak the rag like this, big wet area. And this is the way I really like to do it, because then I'm not getting too much GD85 on the actual chain and just giving myself more to clean up and also more for the, dit the dirt to stick to. And then you just want to wrap it around the chain on the horizontal, so top and bottom, and back pedal it in the two smallest gears. And that'll just drag the dirt off there. And then switch your hand to, so it's covering it vertically, so you're touching both sides. And again, just drag the chain through the rag and that'll just wipe any muck off it. And you'll end up with a chain that's nice and clean that doesn't need more oil on it. Okay, so after all those tips, I've got to give you the one that I promised you at the start. Buy yourself a chain checker if you haven't already got one. Check your chain regularly. And when it's getting worn out, don't let it get worn out. When it's getting worn out, replace it. And that'll save your cassettes and it'll save your chain rings and you won't have to spend anywhere near as much money on running a nice, clean, smooth, dry train. So I'd like you to tell me in the comments what your aha moment was from this tutorial.